A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, June 16, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.15 a.m. local time in Guatemala and El Salvador, where they will be experiencing the most intense rainfall event over the region from today. This is associated with the establishment of a Central American gyre that has strengthened, and where several tropical cyclones could develop. So, in this video, we will be talking about the potential cyclonic development in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico that eventually threatens Texas, Tamaulipas, and Veracruz, and it is in this area where the tropical storm Alberto could possibly develop. On the other hand, we will also discuss a low-pressure system located southwest of Guatemala that will be moving slowly over the next few days parallel to the coast of Guatemala and El Salvador, and it cannot be ruled out that a tropical depression may develop in the coming days. It is important that you also watch the second part of the video, because this Central American gyre will continue to move slowly northwest and potentially leave an extreme rainfall event, including the state of Texas, the states of Tamaulipas and Veracruz, the Yucatan Peninsula, southern Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and regions of Honduras. We are also analyzing the scenario in which another tropical cyclone could develop during the next week. If you live in Texas, Mexico, or Central America, be sure to watch the second part of the video where I will be discussing in detail the expected rainfall accumulations for these regions over the next five to seven days. Briefly, I wanted to mention that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring the area southeast of the United States where a tropical cyclone could also develop by the end of this week. But to learn more details about this forecast and how it could affect the states of Georgia and Florida, I invite you to stay tuned to the YouTube channel where I will be recording another video this morning. But now, let's move on to the latest outlook from the tropics. The National Hurricane Center has increased to 60% the probability of development of a tropical depression in the Bay of Campeche and the southern region of the Gulf of Mexico. Also, see that this morning they identified the low pressure currently located over Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. This is the candidate low pressure to form into the first cyclone of the Atlantic hurricane season. Additionally, the National Hurricane Center continues to mark the area south of El Salvador and Guatemala, where there is a 20% chance that a tropical depression will develop. This is also associated with a low pressure that will be moving slowly southeast over the next few days. It is important to mention that these two low pressure areas are associated with the Central American gyre, which is a much broader circulation covering Central America. As we projected several weeks ago, the Central American gyre tends to produce several low pressure areas that can have cyclonic development, either in the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, or in the waters of the Eastern Pacific. Here we can also see the area that the National Hurricane Center marked north of the Bahamas and east of Florida, where there is a 30% chance that a tropical depression will develop as it moves west. Let's look at the current conditions specifically over Central America, particularly over El Salvador and southern Guatemala. In this infrared satellite image, you can see that heavy showers are being generated, mainly affecting the eastern and southeastern regions of El Salvador. So the extreme rainfall event has already begun, and should last at least 48 to 72 additional hours, where accumulated rainfall can exceed 600 millimeters. You can also see how impressive this area of convection looks, located south of Chiapas, where the low pressure is located that could develop into a tropical depression. Regardless of whether this low pressure manages to become a tropical cyclone, the rainfall forecast would remain the same. It is important that our followers in southern Honduras, southern Guatemala, and El Salvador stay very attentive to the weather bulletins during this week. Some bands are moving northwest and will soon reach regions of Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula, where heavy rains and floods are also expected. Just as projected, the Central American gyre has continued to intensify. Currently, we have a southwest flow moving over El Salvador and southern Guatemala, and it is precisely from today that this flow will be affecting the region. With geographical effects, it can leave an extreme rainfall event that has the potential to cause floods and landslides. Additionally, see the northeast quadrant of the circulation influencing the Yucatan Peninsula region where significant rainfall is also expected from today, extending until the end of this week. In the next animation, you can see the projection of precipitable water according to the GFS model. I want you to see in green what represents anomalies of higher precipitable water, and it is evident that all of Central America and the region of Texas and eastern Mexico will be influenced by broad humidity anomalies that will cause heavy rains across these areas. Also, see that between today, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, the flow of moisture from the eastern Pacific will be moving over El Salvador and Guatemala. However, starting Wednesday, it seems to weaken. So, the most extreme conditions of heavy rain should be reported between Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Similarly, 
the moisture flow will affect the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize between Monday and Wednesday, and eventually this moisture could reach the state of Texas and Tamaulipas, where significant floods may be recorded. At the end of the animation, the GFS model begins to show the possibility of developing another low pressure, but this is preliminary, and we will evaluate it later in the week. Let's focus on the short and medium-term event. Now let's talk about the possibilities of cyclonic development. But first, I wanted to remind you that you should be subscribed to the channel to receive notifications when we record new updates. Check the bottom of the video for the red button that says subscribe, click on it, and then click on the bell to receive notifications when I record new videos. Let's take a look at the GFS model projection. You can see that during Sunday night and early Monday morning, it shows the low pressure located in the Pacific approaching and entering the southern coast of Guatemala. Although I doubt it will become a tropical depression at this time, we cannot rule out this possibility. On the other hand, on Tuesday morning, the GFS model develops a low-pressure system, potentially tropical storm Alberto, in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, associated with the low pressure currently located over Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. Remember, as I have mentioned in the last few days, the development of a tropical cyclone within such a broad circulation associated with the Central American gyre is quite difficult to forecast, and there is uncertainty about where that center of circulation might consolidate. In today's run, the GFS model consolidates it further north, but we cannot rule out it consolidating further south. At least in the morning run, the GFS has a broad low pressure affecting both regions, bringing rains between Wednesday and Thursday of this week. I wanted to show you that by the end of this week, the GFS model has another low pressure moving over this region, which could also have cyclonic development potential. We are talking about a rather extensive event that should last between 5 to 7 days, bringing continuous rainfall across Central America, Southern and Eastern Mexico. Now let's look at the European model projection, which also shows a strong low pressure or possibly a tropical depression entering southern Guatemala and southern Chiapas during the early hours of Monday. And eventually, this area of bad weather moves towards the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. In this case, the European model consolidates the low pressure in the Bay of Campeche, thus having a more southerly and westerly track over Tamaulipas and Veracruz during Wednesday night. Here we see the difference. The European model potentially consolidates tropical storm Alberto further south and moves it over Tamaulipas, while the GFS model consolidates it further north and moves it over southern Texas. Other models, like the German model, show a tropical depression or tropical storm Alberto moving over southern Texas during Wednesday night. Additionally, see that the UK model shows a tropical storm moving west over Tamaulipas. The fact that this model is showing development dramatically increases the probabilities of development in the Gulf of Mexico. I suspect that during today, the National Hurricane Center will continue to increase the probabilities of development for the potentially future tropical storm Alberto. Let's look at different scenarios shown by the ensemble members of the GFS model. As you can see, some of them move the low pressure towards northern Tamaulipas or southern Texas, while others have a more westerly track over central Tamaulipas. It is important if you live in Texas and see these tracks towards Tamaulipas or the southern part of the state, do not forget that the northeastern part of the system is the wettest and can cause excessive rainfall accumulations in central and eastern Texas. I mention this because the rain can fall quite far from the center of circulation. So, be very careful not to confuse the tracks with the effects expected much further north of the circulation as well. Look at the ensemble members of the European model. In this case, the vast majority of them maintain a trajectory towards the state of Tamaulipas because they strengthen the low pressure in the Bay of Campeche. Now let's look at the rainfall accumulation expectations over the coming days. In particular, I wanted to talk about the southern region of Guatemala and El Salvador, where intense rains and accumulations that may exceed 300 mm of rain are expected over the next 24 hours, i.e., between today, Sunday, and early Monday morning. This will be an extreme rain event at least for the next 24 hours, which will likely cause severe flooding and landslides, representing a serious threat. Please heed local authorities' instructions to protect life and property. But the rain event does not end on Monday morning. Here we have the rainfall accumulation projection for the next five days, that is, until next Thursday. And you can see that the GFS model continues to project over 800 millimeters of accumulated rain over the next five days. This would definitely represent an extreme event which, if it materializes, would be historic for the region. Also, for southern Guatemala and southern Chiapas, between 250 to 350 millimeters of accumulated rain is expected. Additionally, I must mention that by the end of the week, the risk of flooding extends to western Nicaragua and southern Honduras, so you should also pay attention to the advisories. Now let's move a little further north to the Yucatan Peninsula. Also, note that heavy rain is expected, especially for the states of Quintana Roo and Yucatan, where the GFS model projects that over 250 millimeters of rain could fall. For the central and northern regions of Belize, other states like Campeche could receive between 100 to 150 millimeters of accumulated rain over the next five days. In the medium and long term, 
By the end of this week and the beginning of next week, a heavy rain event could also occur over Veracruz and Tamaulipas. The GFS model projects that this area could receive over 250 mm. It is also important for residents of Louisiana and Texas to continue monitoring the potential development of Tropical Storm Alberto. The GFS model also has an extreme rain event that could affect the region. It is projecting over 12 inches of rain in sectors of the eastern and central parts of the state, and although this projection may change significantly over the next few days, the eastern, central, and southern parts of Texas should definitely be aware of the potential for a significant flooding event that could affect cities like Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. Additionally, 3 to 4 inches of rain is expected for southern Louisiana from Wednesday through the weekend. Again, there is considerable uncertainty in these projections because, while the American model is quite aggressive with the rain, the European model has lower accumulations but still exceeds 4 inches of rain, particularly along the coast and in southern Texas. That's all for this video. Georgia and Florida should stay tuned for the next video, where I will discuss the low-pressure system that could also develop into a tropical cyclone and move over the southeastern United States. Before I go, I want to invite you to become a member of my YouTube channel. If you're interested, go to the bottom of the video to the blue join button, click it, and see the different sponsorship plans where, with a small monthly contribution, you can receive some additional benefits. With that, I say goodbye. I will continue with this special coverage and keep our followers in Central America informed. See you later.